have to admit that winning awards is hard work. So why should you even bother? Well, winning awards nowadays build social proof and it's become more important than ever for all types of companies to be able to have social proof. And that's because external recognition builds your credibility. That credibility builds trust with the consumer. Trust builds brand loyalty and brand loyalty builds your business. Um, and that's the same for you, no matter what it is you do or who you do it with. Um, and awards are really a valuable business asset that once you have, you're not going to lose. So once you've got that and you become an award winning business or you have an award winning team, that will stay with you. And just from our research and external, much wider global research, just some really key points here for you about winning and why you should really get motivated. First of all, award winning businesses benefit from around a 63% increase in turnover compared to businesses without awards. So there's a really big impact there. Award-winning businesses also experience around 88% more motivation from employees who feel valued by external recognition. And in that research, it showed that employees felt more valued by external recognition than they did by pay rises. Now, obviously, pay rises are important, but they're easier to give in some respects. Um, so actually having that external recognition as a team member can be hugely important to somebody's career and their decision to stay in the business. Um, and award-winning businesses show 77% higher sales than businesses without any awards, even five years after winning. So that really shows you how the longevity around that as a business, awards as a business asset nowadays. And then finally, a new piece of research has recently showed that 85% of people now seek out reviews and awards when considering a purchase. And that doesn't matter if it's a purchase of your service or a purchase of your product, whatever that is, if they're deciding to work with you, it's a little bit like going into a shop to buy a bottle of wine. If you're not sure what you're looking for, you'll be attracted by the one that has an award on it. Um, and you'll feel that you can trust that and you're going to get good value for money. And it's a similar thing uh, with awards for businesses. So first of all, then, what do you need to do to create an award winning entry and, and how are you going to do that? It's very easy to go start looking at the minutiae first of all and thinking, oh, how many words should I write? How am I going to do the editing? Should I put pictures in? Should I not? That's not really for you to worry about right now. First of all, you need to establish your award winning unique selling point. OK, so that's what what is going to make you stand out to the judges and give you an elevated chance of winning. So nowadays, you can expect that around 80% of award, uh, award entries going into any competition will be really good because those businesses are good businesses. They've taken the time to go and enter themselves into awards. So they naturally tend to be the businesses that are doing better things. The next 10% of those awards going in are really good. And they're the ones you'll see in the shortlist. And the top 10% are outstanding. And if you think about it, if you want to win, then you're saying you want to get to the top of the top 10%. So in order to do that, before you even think about your word count or any of that nitty gritty stuff, you need to think about these three key areas of your business. Now, if you've never uh, entered awards before, this will be new to you. If you have entered awards before and you haven't won or you've got to shortlist stage and then you haven't won, I would encourage you after this to go back and look at what you entered before and see if you can identify from that why you didn't win. So the three key elements that we need to bring together for you to win awards and bring you into this sweet spot here of winning are first of all, in your impact, okay? So we need to look at and think about what impact are you actually having? And this is the logical story behind why you do what you do and who you do it for and how you do it. So it's all quite logical. But then we need to combine that with a values driven emotional approach to why you're doing what you're doing with the stories and the people and the human impact that you're having. And then together, we need to bring those with evidence. Um, and evidence is often the piece that's missing to substantiate the impact and the values. This is based on um, Aristotle's modes of persuasion, which is basically how to win an argument. If you don't have these three key elements, it's very difficult to make a winning story or a winning argument in any case. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how this would work. 
um, with a real story uh, of a winner. So I want you to think about that. So first of all, impact, then values, and then evidence, bringing them together with evidence. Have you done that before when you've entered awards? Or have you perhaps had lots of impact and evidence, but not anything that engages the judges emotionally? As a judge, I can tell you that it's not just about adding up your numbers and thinking, oh, they've got great growth or they've got, uh, you know, they're a great business. I need to get behind you emotionally as well. I need to want you to win in order to even subconsciously drive your scores up. Okay, so one without the other doesn't work. Equally, if you have a very emotional values driven story, but you're not backing it up with the logical impact of why you're doing what you're doing and how you're doing it and proving that with evidence, you're not going to win either because it's all, it's all, um, very nice and emotional, but actually you can't prove it. So it's really important to bring these key elements together. Really important to choose your category wisely. And sometimes you have to take a little bit of a step back from what you're doing in the business to think and then move forward about actually where you stand out. So an example here is we've got um, the amazing Usain Bolt and Sir Mo Farah. Now imagine these guys uh, were entering a competition called the Best Runner in the World Award. Which one of them do you think would win? How would you pick a winner between these two amazing runners? Okay, anyone got any ideas? Feel free to put it in the chat if you think you have. So first of all, let me tell you a bit more about them. Usain Bolt's average speed is 27 miles per hour. Mo Farah's average speed is 17 miles per hour. So does that help you to decide which one of them would be the best runner in the world? No, it probably doesn't, because what I haven't told you is over what distance that is. So Usain Bolt is the fastest man in the world, up to 200 metres, but then Mo Farah takes over. So actually, the point of this is not who's the best runner in the world, but you don't see these two men in a competition together because they understand where their strengths are. They have learned what they're best at and they stay in their lane and they get in the right race in the first place. And that's what's important for you when you're entering awards as well, is understanding the competition, understanding where you sit in that competition and understanding if you're really giving yourself the best chance of winning by getting in the right race. And these categories are the races that you're choosing to get in. Um, as a judge, I can tell you that probably 50% of the awards that I judge are in the wrong category. Had they have chosen a different category, they probably would have uh, had more chance of winning. So it's something that happens very commonly, and it's easy to do because we're very close inside our business, particularly if you're writing your own award entries and you're very close to it. And actually taking a step back and taking a breath and thinking, right, actually, we might think we're great at this, but are we really great at it or is there something else? Also, it might be a situation where actually, if you're great in one category, you could also be great in two or three categories. So it's worth having a look across the board as well. There's different criteria for each one. So looking at some of the um, looking at some of the categories here, you've got uh, awards as an agency. You've got awards for your specific um, your specific industry. So obviously, that's going to refine. So for example, if you enter best in practice, industrial, pharma, engineering, and science, then that's going to refine the competition to other businesses that are also in that same industry as you. Whereas actually, if you go into a um, something, uh, something else about team, or let's see what else we've got here, unsung hero, you could go up against other different specialisms. So think about whether you're standing out within your industry, uh, within your niche sector of the industry, or whether it's bigger than that. So if you look here at the agency of the year, then obviously that's refined by size as well. So there's lots of different opportunities. And this is a great award because the categories have been refined in a way that you can make those choices. I think it's really good to take a little bit of a step back and think, well, where is it that we would sit? Um, and what are we doing best at? And how can we show that we shine in that particular type of category, just like these gents do here? Then it's really important to write an outstanding story. And this is where we bring those three key areas together. So the impact, the values and the evidence. And I'm just going to tell you a story about a business that we worked with. And what I want you to do while I'm telling you the story is just think about how could this apply to you and what you've been doing and some of the people you've been working with. So this is um, Close Brothers Retail Finance. They were called at the time. And... 
Um, we worked with them a few years ago and basically they were a new startup business that had come out of an established business, which was the Close Brothers Merchant Bank. Now, in their startup business, there was only um, they started with like four or five of them in the business and they were a very small player in a very big market. So retail finance, just to, in case you don't know what that is is where um, if I want to go and buy a sofa or a big purchase item from a, from a store, but I might not want to pay for it on the day, then the, a finance provider will be providing finance to that retailer so that I can have 0% interest-free credit and pay monthly, for example. So that's what they were doing. And they were working with large businesses and small businesses. And they came to me and said, right, we need to raise our profile. It's a huge industry. We're really small. We need to make people aware of us. We need to grow our brand. Can you help us? We've got this great innovation. So I said, yeah, sure. What's the innovation? And they said, well, we've got this technology that means that when we're working with a retailer, we can send the money down the line to the retailer within four seconds. So when someone goes in to make a purchase, they get signed up on an iPad, they're buying their sofa or something. And then we just send the money down the line to the, to the retailer within four seconds. So I said, great, that's lovely. But it's not award winning because... As a consumer, it makes no difference to me whatsoever whether you send that down the line in four seconds or four minutes or four hours or four days. So long as you're fulfilling your service levels with that retailer, as a, as a customer, what's the impact on me? It makes no difference at all. So actually, sounds exciting, but it's not where we would position for an award. So think about this for your business as well so we said right instead of looking at the innovation side of it let's look at what impact is what difference are you actually making to people's lives so we dug around and said right let's find out about some of your smaller customers so they told me about one of their customers who was called Nigel and he ran um, a white goods shop in Essex I think it was and he sold fridges and freezers and washing machines and those kind of things now, he'd approached them for retail finance because as a small business, he hadn't been able to get retail finance by the other providers because they, they had a threshold that he, did, he wasn't meeting for turnover. So they said, no, we'll do it for small businesses. We don't mind doing that as well. We need to build up our profile so we'll work with the small businesses. And actually, by working with the small businesses, we can really change their lives. So what they did was they provided Nigel with retail finance. And what Nigel had, the problem he'd been having was people were coming into his shop, testing out his washing machines and pressing the buttons and opening the fridge doors and then saying, that's great, Nigel. Um, can I buy that? And he'd say, well, they'd say, oh, I don't want to spend any money today, though. Can you do like 0% interest free credit? And he'd say, no, I'm not. I can't provide that until Close Brothers came along. And what had been happening was people were getting on their phone in his shop and Googling where they could buy a washing machine for interest free credit from somewhere else. He was basically ending up a showroom for curries. So they came along and said, we'll provide you with interest-free credit. And they didn't just do that. They showed him how to put it on his website. They taught him about SEO so that he could make sure that people knew that he was providing this. And within a very short amount of time, his sales grew and grew so much so that he actually opened a second shop. Now, when it came to awards, that was a much more exciting and impactful story because it changed from being about innovation and technology, which yes, you can win awards for, but you need to demonstrate the human impact. So instead of it just being about the speed of sending money down a line, it was about the human impact it was actually having on a business and that entrepreneur. And then when you looked at all the other small businesses they, way they were working with and multiplied that up, you saw that actually it was a story about saving the Great British High Street and about supporting entrepreneurs to achieve their dreams. It wasn't a story about selling money quickly. So if you think about that from an impact point of view, the human impact and the human engagement was there. We took them, we had all the, all the, um, all the uh, statistics and evidence that we needed to demonstrate this and substantiate the story. So those three key areas really came together really well. Um, and they, we defined that they'd basically helped their customer sales to rise by 30% due to their work in, on average, um, due to their work with them. And then we entered them into the competitions, all the different awards competitions, and even Nigel went along to their presentations sometimes, which he loved. Um, and they won every single award we put them in for. Now, as a result of that, they became very attractive in the marketplace and they attracted the attention of their competitors 
Uh, one of those was Klarna, who then bought them. And Alex here in the centre was the um, head of Close Brothers Retail Finance. He's now the head of Klarna UK. And he says without that awards programme, he absolutely would not have been where he is today. And I tell you that story because it, it's, it happens all the time, but you need to be able to take a step back from your business and look at the real human impact that you're having. Now you're in the recruitment industry. There's so much human impact there. You're changing lives by helping people to get jobs, um, helping businesses to grow and so many other great things. So you need to think about how you're going to present that as evidence. Now here, um, this is some examples. This is actually genuinely examples of evidence from our sales brochure. So I've used it to show you how evidence can work in your award entry. Um, so what we do every year, and we support our clients to do this as well um, and, and do this for them, is we do a client impact survey. So we're not just finding out about our service and whether they like our service or they don't like our service, we're finding out what impact our service is having on them. Because if we're not having an impact, then we're obviously not doing something right. So we need to know, and you need to know, what are you doing right? How are you making a difference? How are you changing lives? How are you improving business for the businesses that you're working with? So how we do that is a survey-based um, tool that we've developed. And basically, this is what comes out the other end. So this is just some examples. So 75% of the businesses that we survey said that they chose us because of our good reputation. 100% said it was worth it and it was a good investment for their business. And then the impact on them since entering awards, so that's the service we're providing, 83% said team morale increased, 67 which is higher than the industry average average said their turnover increased and 80% said the brand awareness increased. So I can tell you immediately what impact I'm having on, on my clients. Can you tell me what impact you're having on your clients? Do you know what that is? And can you summarize it in a way that a judge will understand that? And it will substantiate the story that you're giving them. We can also see here that we have five star rating. So that's another way of substantiating using evidence. Um, Clients have it. And this was some um, verbatim feedback because we allow them to write on there as well. So different uh, levels of impact that they've got, just some examples were investment and finance opportunities. This is from entering and winning awards. Um, awards help them to acquire new business and a pool to a wider range of talent, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important to understand the impact that you're having. Um, and it, it's also really important to be able to demonstrate and substantiate that in a way that's both qualitative and quantitative if you want to have the strongest possible argument that will get you to the top of that top tier of award entries that are going in so remember it's okay to write a mediocre award entry that's fine but you probably won't win with it so if you really want to go and smash it and impress the judges you need to put some effort in before you even start writing your award entry to understand your impact measure your impact and be able to demonstrate your impact, okay? And this is really quick to do as well. I mean, we have, we sometimes turn this around for clients within two days. So it's, it, you know, it's not impossible to do, don't feel overwhelmed by it, but it is really important if you're really serious about winning. It's also really important to use our evidence to back up claims in a way that the judges will understand and it will resonate with them. So this is like genuine examples of what I see in award entries as a judge. So this first one here says our business is the best in the industry. We have created incredible results from our innovative initiatives and our newest products have flown up off the shelves which is all very nice, but tells me absolutely nothing, okay? So I don't know as a judge from that really what you've done, how you've done it, what your market share is or anything. So in a just slightly longer sentence, but much more meaningful sentence, we could say instead, our business now serves as 58% of the market, making us the industry leader. We have grown by 18% year on year with new product sales creating 10% of our revenue in the last 12 months, Joe Blog says, and that would be a testimonial. Um, I can tell the that's the whole story for me. I can see exactly what's going on in the business, um, what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, and, and it's backed up and substantiated qualitatively and quantitatively. So think about what you're writing. Don't write fluffy sentences to fill up word spaces. Write sentences that are packed with meaning because the more meaning you can get in there, the more points you'll score when you're being judged. Also, some just some other tips that are 
sound obvious, but you wouldn't believe how often are avoided. So the first one is be honest. The awards judges are business people. They understand that you have challenges. They understand that sometimes it's not easy. They understand that you have to overcome issues that you weren't expecting. If you tell me a story about overcoming your challenge, I will be much more impressed than if you tell me a story that everything's perfect all the time and nothing ever goes wrong. Um, because that's not really how business works, especially in a pandemic and all sorts of other things. So remember, we want to make an emotional engagement with you as well. And actually by being real and relatable and honest, it's much easier to engage with you than it is if you write a shiny marketing story that could just as well be on your website, but doesn't actually re really give us nitty gritty. Um, the other thing is to keep it simple. So don't try and blast and confuse people with your jargon and your inside terminology. Keep it simple and tell the story in a way that your granny could understand it. Because if your granny can understand it, then the judges definitely can. Okay, if you're not sure, read it out loud um, and see see what you uh, you get back from other people as well. And also choose facts over cliches. So, oh goodness, the award entries I read that are full of cliches. It's like we've gone into The Apprentice or something. So please just write in plain English and don't do something like this. This is an example of something that I read. In a paradigm shift, we bit the bullet and thought outside the box to synergize with our team, break down the silos and do more with less. The net result was win-win it's like the 1980s all over again um so instead say something that has meaning in plain english we improve both the customer and employee experience by training and developing a specialist customer service team within 12 months this initiative resulted in outstanding customer and employee feedback and 20 percent growth in sales brilliant boom you're more likely to win an award with something like that than you are with some horrible cliches that no one really understands uh why they're writing and no judge understands why they're in there um, and the quality of your entry counts, okay? Don't be too proud to get feedback. Even Shakespeare had a proofreader. Did you know that? Never submit your first draft, okay? Your first draft, and I know there were some questions around how do I keep to the word limit and things like that. Your first draft can be as long as you want it to be. Just get the ideas out of your head. Just write notes and just get it all out. Record it. If you don't want to write it, then record it. Um, and that's, that's all getting it all out of your head. And then where the strength comes in your entry is then considering it and editing it and working it backwards. And that's when you get inside the word count. Um, we have, obviously our team is doing this day in, day out, day in, day out. I would not expect them to start with a draft that met the word limit. I would expect them to start with all the information they possibly could and then trim and rewrite and trim and rewrite until they got a really, really strong story with the most, most meaningful impact in there. So never submit that first written draft. Do go away and I would say, let it breathe. I can tell when an entry hasn't been allowed to breathe. Let it breathe. Take, that means take your eyes off it for a few days. Move away from it. Don't look at it again because you can't see the wood for the trees. And then come back to it and you'll be able to start seeing where you need to cut back and edit. And then, as I said, read your entry aloud to a friend or to a colleague. Where you start stumbling is where it needs to be edited, okay? So it's a good way of testing how it's landing. See what people understand and what they don't. You can also use tools. There's so many different tools nowadays for spelling and grammar, vocabulary. It's really important that your entry is high quality. I know people asked about the visuals of entries as well. If you think back to the impact I was showing you with, you can use graphs and numbers and percentages and things like that. You can use, I love a team photo. I like to be able to picture who I'm reading about. Um, so obviously logos can be important depending on who you're working with, things like that. So there's lots of visuals you can use that will bring your entry to life, but it's um, substance over style. <laughs> OK, at the end of the day, I'd rather read something that's completely plain text that doesn't have a single image in it, but is a meaningful, truthful, highly impactful and engaging story than something that looks really pretty, but is basically a load of fluff. So think about uh, your style and your substance and, and bringing those together, ideally in a way that they're equally weighted. So they, it looks good, but it's really, really high quality and high impact as well. So I'm going to leave you with that now, So, because uh, I could go on for days, um, and with this statement that I hope will encourage you to enter, either you win or you will learn, and that's Nelson Mandela who said that, because you will, you'll either win or you will learn something about your business, and you'll get into a competition, and you can then reflect on that and review and see what you can do to improve. So it's a really important part of awards that you focus on 
using the awards to get you to your ultimate goals. But if they're not winning, that you're learning from them and understanding why and using that as a business development tool to move you forward. So I'll come to some questions in a minute. I'm just going to finish off with a couple of freebies for you. Um, so we've got uh, some free tools on our website if you want to have a look. Um, so and they're completely free. So the first one is our Win Business Awards scorecard. Now, what you can do is you can go and uh, fill in the questions on there and it will generate a report for you that looks at the six key um, pillars of award success, which are areas that I've um, identified over the years that will make a difference to whether you win or not. And it will generate a report to show you where your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and that will help you to know what to focus on for your awards. Uh, we also have uh, the awards generator tool, which generates a list of general awards that you could also enter based on the criteria and the answers that you give. So they're all really good to have a go at. Um, I also have um, my book, which has come out recently, which you can download from Amazon. Um, so contact us if you would like a review copy, then we can send you a review copy of that. And these are our social channels. So please do follow me. I'm, I'm most reliable on LinkedIn. Not, I am on, on everything, but I am mostly on LinkedIn. So do follow me, connect up, say hi. Um, very friendly. So I'm very happy to connect. Um, if you would like any help with anything, then that's our email address and our website. Mm -hmm.